All right, so we're kicking off this edition of the Sportsmax Zone talking about the oldest continental tournament in football history. Six CONCACAF teams were invited or qualified for the Copa America, but it's looking increasingly likely that only two of those teams, Canada and Panama, will be heading to the quarterfinals. CONCACAF giants of the USA and Mexico are among the teams who failed to advance alongside Jamaica, who finished at the bottom of their group. Costa Rica, who are in Group C, would need to beat Paraguay handily in their final group game tonight and hope for a comfortable Colombia win against Brazil as well. So joining us this afternoon to discuss the state of CONCACAF is a man who once played in the Confederation Sportsmax football analyst, Brent Sancho. Good afternoon, Brent. How are you doing? What's the weather like in Trinidad and Tobago? Let's start there. Hi, Mariah, and hi to all of you. It's actually quite fine. Um, uh, we had some rain this morning quite early, uh, but since then it's cleared up. Uh, we have had, obviously, some damage in Tobago. And uh, as the, the cleanup continues, um, you know, the weather's hold up quite well for that uh, continuation of the cleanup. Yeah, really happy to hear that it's a bit under control back home. And, you know, we'll continue to monitor that as well. So let's get to the meat of the matter, the reason why we it invited you here on the Sportsmax Zone to talk about these CONCACAF teams and how they went about their business in Copa America. Um, of course, Trinidad and Tobago, they did not um, make the cut and they were not a part of the Copa America. But Jamaica did and they finished at the bottom of their group, Brent. Very, very disappointing for Jamaican fans and, of course, the Caribbean by extension. Yeah, when you look at CONCACAF on the whole, you would see, and it's easy to qualify, that it has been a disappointing tournament for the CONCACAF teams. Of course, each team that has, been, that has qualified to this tournament had uh, varying aspirations. As you mentioned, the Jamaican team along the U.S. and Mexico may have felt that they could have at least gotten out the group stages. Uh, all three teams uh, have been eliminated thus far. Uh, and if you are to quantify that, it would suggest that uh, arguably the two out of the three top teams in CONCACAF have failed miserably in their uh, uh, plot to try to get out of the group stages. But I would say, Mariah, that uh, the writing was on the wall for many of those teams, inclusive of Jamaica, uh, and you felt leading into the tournament, despite a lot of the hype behind uh, those teams, that they would come out of the group stages. If you look at their results, if you looked at what transpired leading up to the tournament, I think what, tra what happened in the, in the Copa is exactly uh, according to script. And Brent, you say the writing was on the wall and, you know, you felt as if it went to script, right? But there must be some sort of reason that, you know, you had those initial thoughts and then it came to pass. So I know it won't be the same for every team because we're not like twins or triplets or anything like that. But let's start with Jamaica. Why from the inception you felt as if um, Jamaica was not going to come out of the Copa America in the way many people were hoping? What contributed to that? Well, I think leading into the, the tournament, uh, there were a, a plethora of reasons why I felt that way, but I, I'll try to stick to the main points. I think when you look at, obviously, the list of, of injured players coming in, they, they did have a challenge as it relates to, to squad collect, uh, selection and players coming on it. And when I use that word injury list, I use the fact that players were coming off of injury and they weren't probably up to the, the match standards that uh, they probably would have been needed to come in uh, to this tournament. Uh, and of course, when you, you look at the fact uh, that Jamaica won't necessarily play in their best brand of football going into it, there has been a lot of conversation regarding the, the way uh, Coach Helmut Gerson have sort, uh, set up that Jamaica team. Uh, it was, of course, uh, most people feeling that it was ultra defensive. I think in, in the way he set it up tactically, it's, it's not much wrong with it. I think where I am disappointed with the Jamaican team is that they never really utilized one of their main strengths, and that's their physicality. I would have liked to see that team be a little bit more aggressive in pressing teams high up the park. Uh, and I would have liked to see them uh, be a bit more expressive when they get it into their, their very talented players in, in the likes of Damani Gray uh, and, and, and of course the likes of that. And of course the Leon Bailey saga did not help their case. Yeah. It is, there's obviously going to be challenges when you have one of your top players going through the sort of situations that he did with the GFF. Whether he's right or wrong, that's not the question. But I think the impact of that also would have played some role in the way Jamaica performed. So then, you know, we're looking at Jamaica and we've been following that very, very closely. What about the CONCACAF giants, like teams like USA and Mexico? They also failed to make it um, out of the group. So again, Brent, it's pointing us into a direction as to 
what's going on with the CONCACAF teams. But what went wrong for these two teams? I think that the long and short <clears throat> for Mexico, for example, I think they've had an aging team for quite some while. They have not really brought through the talented players that we're used to seeing in Mexico. Uh, and a prime example of that is that they haven't qualified for the U20s and the Olympic tournament this season. Of course, uh, they, were, they only won one out of four games at the under-17 level. A, a country that normally has a conveyor belt of talent that you can point to uh, the chaotic domestic season that they have in Mexico as one of the challenges for the uh, upbringing of talent. And I think when you look at the American team, you know, there's a lot of question marks and, and whether or not this is really their golden generation. On paper, it looks that way. A lot of those players from a very young age cracked onto the world scene. But what have they done since then? I think when you look at uh, some of the individual performances from a domestic league perspective, uh, a lot of those players on the American team did struggle this season. So I think when you put those two together, uh, it, it does point to the fact as to why those two giants would have struggled. And a, and a major point, Mariah, outside of it, and maybe the collective when you bring all three teams together, particularly so for Mexico and Canada, I don't think the Nations League has helped uh, uh, Sorry, Mexico and the USA. Because when you look at the type of games that Mexico and, and, and USA have played over the last three to four years in the CONCACAF Nations League, it doesn't help them. They don't play the Englands, the Netherlands, Brazil, the high-level friendly internationals that these two teams normally play. Instead, they had to face up against uh, teams, the lesser minnows in the CONCACAF region because they were playing in the Nations League. And I think that also hampered the U.S. and the Mexicans. Yeah, I want to get the, your view, though, Brent, on the reality that in a group of CONCACAF against CONMEBOL, based on world rankings, most of the CONMEBOL teams are ranked in the top 30 in the world. And outside of the USA and Mexico, most of the CONCACAF teams are ranked 40 and below. So is it that we should have expected what we have gotten in, in this particular Copa America? I have a follow-up question, but you can answer that one first. I think you, you have, to, if you look at it at the whole Lance, yes, I think you may have expected that, but you do have to pull the US and Mexico out of the CONCACAF group that went to the Copa or do participate in the Copa, Copa because Mexico have reached the finals twice and they've done quite well at the, the Copa America. So that's a team that has normally performed well at the Copa America and US have also had uh, their uh, say in some of the editions of the Copa America. Outside of that, it is business as usual. Uh, and I think when you talk about the disappointment in CONCACAF, uh, it's, uh, it, it really points towards uh, the US and the Mexicans because they normally give a good account to themselves. And, and what we saw in this tournament was quite the opposite. Uh, they looked uh, uh, two teams void of ideas. And, and again, it, 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 this is something that we saw leading up to this tournament. We, we've spoken so many times on this program about how poor this Mexican team is and how poor they have been for, for quite uh, a number of years. So, uh, yes, I, I'm not surprised. Historically, they have done well. Uh, and so, yes, you could point to that as a collective. We have always struggled because of the other teams that qualify. Uh, so when you, you, you ring friends to the U.S. and the Mexicans, it does bring a lot of, a, a lot of uh, uh, well, a lot of concern to the CONCACAF region because normally those two teams represent the CONCACAF well. Yeah, and just to be more specific with uh, targeting this discussion, Brent, because you are right, Mexico and the USA have done reasonably well in this tournament before. Um, the last Copa America that the Americans were involved in, they were semifinalists back in, in 2016 as, as a host country, of course. So two things. Is it that the USA has gone backward? And do you agree with the current na narrative I'm hearing from a lot of experts that this is the worst Mexican team we've ever seen? Well, certainly in decades. <laughs> Yeah, I would, I would suggest it's, it's a pretty poor Mexican team. And I try to give Lance some reason behind why maybe that is the situation. Uh, in the last two editions of the World Cup, both in Qatar and Russia, they were the second oldest team in, in the World Cup. So that suggests to me that the players, we, we're used to seeing this, players from Mexico coming through the ranks and, of course, supplementing this Mexican team. We haven't seen that. When last you've seen a Mexican player break into the likes of Barcelona, like a Rafael Marquez or or Chicharito or Manchester United, you, still, you haven't seen that for quite some time. And Hugo that Sanchez of that, the past. Exactly. And that, that conveyor belt that we're used to, that helps the Mexican national team, hasn't been there. And now they probably will get rid of their, their, their coach, uh, Lozano, but he would be the third coach in 18 months. When are they going to actually point the fingers at themselves? As I said, the league domestic format there 
is more uh, constructed to television revenue and not necessarily football development. And that is a problem in Mexico. And when you point to the American team, yes, a lot of these players uh, broke into the international team at quite a young age. Posic, Reina, Weir, we can name a lot, Musa, uh, have done very well. But what did they do this season? How did they do the domestically this season? I think they struggled. Uh, and because of that, we saw that play out in the field. Tyler Adams, a player that plays for Bournemouth, played four games this season, albeit, of course, he did have an injury-prone season, but he didn't do particularly well. Uh, McKenzie didn't like the wall of fire at Juventus, and he had to play a, a prominent role in the American team. So I, I think when you bring it into context, a lot of what I just said are reasons why both Mexico and the USA did not do well in, in the Copa America. And it's unfair to give them the tagline, uh, which is based really on the history they have in the tournament, because you have to look at the now. And the now suggests to you that both countries leading up to the 2026 World Cup has a lot of work to do. Yeah, and can we look a little bit more on the positive side now, because the Canadians from the last World Cup uh, look to be on the upgrade. And uh, Panama is a team that, I guess, earns more respect now than they did 15 or 20 years ago. <laughs> yes, yeah, certainly. And uh, of course, the, the Canadians coming out of the World Cup did have their dip in form. They've had some very disappointing results uh, after the World Cup, but they seem to be finding their leg. They, there is a high level of consistency. Of course, uh, players now uh, playing regularly in their domestic leagues across the world. And we're seeing a Canadian team that is not just resolute, but does offer a threat going forward. And Panama is... Uh, in the CONCACAF region, I would suggest, uh, a model of consistency. They have been in and around the top three, top four in CONCACAF for quite some time now. And now they are expressing themselves in this in this uh, situation, in this edition of Copa. So yes, the teams that we're used to pointing at, the Mexicans and the, and the Americans, as uh, the king and queens of, of, of course of CONCACAF is no longer. And maybe now it's the likes of Can Canada and Panama to start showing themselves again though, I would suggest, Lance, that despite the fact that both Canada and Panama has done well in this tournament, I just don't think they have the quality of a latter-day Mexico or a latter-day USA. But again, credit to both teams because they've done extremely well in this tournament so far. Yeah, and um, I want to ask a little about the CONMEBOL teams and where this title may go in the end. But before I do that, you touched earlier on on your disappointment with the Jamaican team's performance, but suggested that you thought that there were signs there that the team wasn't going to do very well. You are on record, Brent, as saying, as far as the roster is concerned, Leon Bailey included, that this is the strongest Jamaica team that you have ever seen. You're, you're on record as, as saying that. Lige, who has been analyzing the tournament for us, has criticized the strategy that Hal Grimson had used in, in the Copa America, them not, them not pressing enough, them not being brave enough to express themselves and present a more forward um, approach as opposed to, you know, sitting back and, you know, getting players in numbers behind the ball. Do you first agree with uh, Lige's take? And um, what are your overall views on, on, on Hal Grimson's tenure as the coach of this team? I'll start with the latter question. Look, I do think that he's done a good job in, in his body of work uh, for the Jamaica national team. But let's be honest, it was always going to be difficult for him because when I talk about the best roster uh, in Jamaican's football in history, you also talk about the challenges and the inconsistencies of the type of players available for him. And he's always had to deal with either suspensions, whether it be from the JFF, or, of course, well, that's the Liam Bailey case, or in the situations of players committed to the team. We've seen in, in instances where players uh, didn't, didn't come for international call-ups. He didn't have really that consistency that he may have wanted. Uh, and I think somewhere along the line, uh, Coach Hamilton felt that he needed to, to be a little bit more de defensive, which we've seen throughout football. We see it in, in the varying tournaments that teams sit in a low block or sit a bit deeper. But I do agree with Lichie. What I'm disappointed in is what is Jamaica's strong point? What characteristic does Jamaica has that makes them that threat that made everyone believe that they have an opportunity of coming up with a good season? And that's their physicality. It was never utilized. They never pressed high up the park. There was never belief that they could win the football high up the park or get the ball, of course, to, the, to their danger men in the right areas. That never, that never materialized. And for that, yes, you can point the finger possibly of the coach, and you could possibly point it at the players for not giving that application. But, of course, 
as I said, it, it is a, a very disappointing result because I do believe that the ingredients is there for Jamaica to do well on the world stage. But up to, up to now, Lance, I have not seen a Jamaica team comfortable in their own skin, an identity that you expect. And that identity lays in that main characteristic I keep mentioning about, and that's Jamaica physicality. We have not seen it. Yeah. Um, I did reference the fact that this failed Copa America program for Jamaica isn't new. They were winless. Well, not only winless, but they lost all their games, as they did in 2015 and 2016 under Winfred Schaefer's coaching. But is there a difference, you think, Brent, in the failures in 2015 and 2016 compared to this failure? Yeah, I think there's a difference. And right away, you'd have to point to the, the, the caliber of players that they now have at their disposal. Uh, certainly a higher, a higher caliber of players, more experienced players, and players that play at, at quite, a, quite a decent level. Uh, and you would have felt that with, with the, those sorts of players, and of course, uh, the, the type of players sitting behind them as well, that they would have done well. Uh, and it's disappointing. And, and let's be honest, Lance, this is a group that Jamaica coming into it, should have fancied themselves coming out of it. A Mexican team that they have beaten in the past, and of course, a Venezuela team that they would have felt that they can do better, that they can't can get a result from. So it really was an underwhelming performance. And when you break it down as to what we saw in this year's edition of the Copa from Jamaica, it was really a lackluster performance. You may could take some salvage in the second half Ecuador performance, but outside of that, throughout the, 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 the tournament, it was pretty poor. And, and that, to me, uh, was the most disappointing thing that, that I saw with this team compared with the Schaefer's team. Yeah, of course, Brent, you know, as always, it's a pleasure whenever you stop by here on the Sports Max Zone. Enjoyed your input on the CONCACAF Giants struggling in Copa America and hoping that we can chat with you again really, really soon. Thank you so much for your time. So I'm great, guys. Have a good one. Yeah, Brent Sancho there, of course, former Minister of Sports in Trinidad and Tobago and former Soka Warrior. We're going to take a quick break and come right back.